The convergence of broadcast and broadband. This is what ATSC 3.0 promised when it came out in 2017. On WTVJ before, that convergence consisted of WPBT and PBS World being broadband channels. And both of these channels require an internet connection in order to display. Same thing with PBS World here, and you can tell it's an internet channel because of how fast it loads. What is brand new on WTVJ is the brand new broadcast apps of WTVJ, NBC6, and WSCV Telemundo 51. So let's first start off with Telemundo 51. They are playing a movie right now, War. Let's click into this. All I have to do is just click this button here on the right. As you can see, there was already a message that came up that asked me if I wanted to start this from the beginning. I just click this right button and as you can see here, it brings up this whole menu with a bunch of options. The first option, which is one of the most unique things I've seen, and I've been testing a bunch of these broadcast apps at various stations across the country. This one has start from beginning, and this is a big deal because you can start this two hour long movie from the beginning if you wanted to using ATSC 3.0. So all I have to do is click start from the beginning. It brings up this whole menu, all I have to do is click OK there, where it says start from the beginning. So it just started this from the beginning. Now this was actually the tail end of the movie that it was playing beforehand. And you're gonna see this because, yep, the credits started rolling. So a little bit behind where it should have started, but this is where it started. And as you can see here, it was able to bring it up uh, perfectly fine here. This is using the internet, so this did not come from the over-the-air broadcast signal from my antenna paperclip. This came from the internet. All right, and there are a bunch of other options here as well, like local or local in Spanish. And it brings up all of these local clips from Telemundo 51 that you can watch on demand. This is a glitch with the ADTH box. As you can see, all I was doing was trying to press up to get to the next on-demand program. And unfortunately what happened is it brought up this multiple channel view, which is what happens when you click this up button. So instead of moving me up, it just started toggling these uh, other channels. So that is definitely something that ADTH needs to fix with a future software update. Uh, it brought up this again. We're gonna click menu and get out of the live program here. Um, and as you can see, there's locale, there's uh, entertainment, there's Estados Unidos y Mundo, which is the United States and world, deportes, uh, sports, el tiempo, weather, etc. with Telemundo 51 here. Let's click on el tiempo, which is the weather. And this brings up a really neat view with the over-the-air broadcast here in the right-hand bottom corner along with internet-based data. There's a couple options here. There's video, there is a calendar with the weather every single day, and there is a live weather radar as well. So I just clicked that. And in this corner here, there's uh, the hour by hour weather forecast. One little glitch as the weather radar is loading up is uh, the QR code says Storm Team 4. So I guess they're just repurposing QR codes from other stations. Um, not a big deal because not a lot of people are using these broadcast apps yet, but definitely something for them to uh, try to fix. And of course, this whole experience, other than the live broadcast here, requires an internet connection. And this is something that I would hope gets changed in the future to where maybe just a skeleton of the broadcast app is sent over the air. Maybe this weather is sent over the air. And then maybe to bring up the live weather radar, it says connect to the internet. Same thing with a bunch of the on-demand programming as well. And Telemundo is not the only one from WTVJ, obviously. This is a new feature with NBC Universal Comcast stations that are ATSC 3.0. So let's get out of this and let's go to WTVJ here, NBC6. This is the World Figure Skating Championships here, as you can see. So we're gonna wait for it to load. And as you can see, it says, 
to restart this program, press the right hand arrow here. All right, so as you can see, the UI is the exact same as the Telemundo 51 station. And this is the stock UI, if you will, that NBC is going to be using. And I will say out of all of the UIs that I've seen, NBC's is my favorite with these um, pneumorphic round buttons. I think it looks really nice. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And I'll show you some of the other broadcast apps as well. But this is the same thing as Telemundo 51, except with NBC6, I noticed that there's a lot more programming on demand. This just seems to be more baked than Telemundo 51. So there's the same uh, options here and it just did the same glitch where it's bringing me back to the last channel uh, just by scrolling up again, ADTH, if you're watching this, please fix this. All right, I got it back up. Scrolling through, it's the same sort of thing as Telemundo 51. There's entertainment, US and world, sports, local, weather, and then I'll be uh, diving deep into the preferences in just a second. Literally what I have to do is I have to click the back button, scroll up once, click the back button again, just to keep it from going over onto the multi-channel view thing. So let's do probably the one that I was really impressed with, which is entertainment. This entertainment screen is packed with programming. So this top, uh, I guess, tier of programs is literally full episodes of NBC shows that you can pick from. So like I was watching this one episode here and it actually uh, showed where I left off and I can just click on this. And as you can see, it is loading and it brings me back right where I left off. So this was a show that aired 24 days ago. This is completely on demand. This data is coming from the internet right now. Uh, this is not coming from the over-the-air broadcast signal. And if I want to back it up to, say, the beginning, I can do that. So I just go down and I can just keep going minus 10, minus 10. So as you can see, NBC logo, this is a full 42-minute long on-demand program, as you can see. This does not have ads, and this is something that I've noticed with everything, all the on-demand programming so far, is as of the time that I'm recording, you can watch all of this. Oop, it just paused. Okay. Seems to be working fine. But all of this works without uh, any ads playing in between the show. So I wonder how long this will last. I think this is more of a testing phase where they're uh, not prioritizing I guess ad revenue at the moment for these on-demand programs, but this is actually a really neat experience. And scrolling down a little bit more, as you can see, there's like uh, small snippets from The Voice. Um, there's small snippets from Saturday Night Live. So for instance, I was watching the Close Encounter cold open and it showed where I left off. So I can just click on uh, this episode and it is gathering the data from the internet right now to produce this on-demand uh, snippet. And if I want to go back to the beginning, I just keep clicking the back and then click play. And as you can see, it starts off uh, from the beginning. Little glitchy, as you can see here, there's like frames that are being dropped. Now it seems to be uh, doing fine. But one of the things that I wish they did is, let's say the Close Encounter cold open is something that a lot of people watch on demand. Why not broadcast this on-demand clip actually over the air. If a lot of people are watching some of these uh, SNL skits, then maybe the ones that are the most popular, they actually broadcast. And then the less popular ones, they save for the internet. If you don't have an internet connection, you still have a basic experience. And then it says something like, in order to watch more snippets, please connect to the internet. Something like that. I think that would make this experience way better. Um, and there's definitely the capability to do that with ATSC 3.0. And in terms of data capacity, if they just switched this live program to versatile video coding, they would automatically have enough room to start doing some stuff like this. So definitely there's uh, tons of room to do this if things are switched around. As of right now, unfortunately, all of this requires an internet connection, which is why I think this would be so nice to have sort of a skeleton experience without an internet connection. All right, so one thing that everybody should definitely look into when they start playing around with this is the preferences tab. Let's get into this and go to TV settings. Now, one of the things that 
concerns me is the amount of data collection. So if you care about your privacy, go down to where it says your privacy choices. This is defaulted to on for everybody. So I would love a world where everything was defaulted to off and you had to actually opt in to having your data sold. And it literally says up here, um, you may have the right to opt out of the sale or processing and disclosure of your personal information. So they're literally telling you that they are going to be selling your personal information by using this broadcast app. So definitely go into this if you care about privacy, click off and turn this off. And hopefully they respect that. And once you actually click off, they stop uh, selling your personal information. This is one of the reasons why I would really like a broadcast app that doesn't necessarily need everything to come from the internet. And it would be nice to be able to access some on-demand programming from the broadcast itself. So definitely, if you care about that sort of thing, go in here, make sure you check that uh, off. Other than that, as far as the other broadcast apps are concerned, like I was saying, WPBT, the broadband channel, I guess, one of the two on WTBJ, it has a broadcast app. So I just click the right button here, and then this is what it looks like. It's an okay UI, I think it looks okay. Um, you've got the uh, PBS logo up in the corner here, some other information, the time, the channel, and then you can uh, sort through some on-demand content here as well. So that is it for WTVJ. Just those three channels have broadcast apps. WLTV, the Univision affiliate, doesn't have a broadcast app. But WPLG on the WPLG Lighthouse, the other one in Miami, Florida, this is the only other channel in Miami that has... Uh, a broadcast app. So I can just click into this. There we go. It took a second to load. And this is what theirs looks like. So again, not my favorite looking UI. Uh, they don't have an option to uh, start anything over from the beginning. And as you can see, they actually have a lot of options uh, for WPLG here. This is definitely tailored for their local station where I feel like NBC Universal kind of went the the more general NBC route. This is hyper local in my opinion with the, the live events and cams. Like you can go through and there's like the Hollywood Beach cam and the Fort Lauderdale cam and the Key West cam, the downtown Miami. So if I wanna see what downtown Miami looks like right now, if this will work. No, Mount Sinai. Okay, Mount Sinai is working. <laughs> Maybe the downtown Miami cam isn't. But uh, this is the Mount Sinai cam. So pretty cool. You can go through cams. There's their uh, Dirty Dining series, which is a, a little mini series on WPLG that they have. Um, there's the SoFlo, the South Florida Morning News. So, you know, this week in South Florida, weather, a little weather tab with, you know, little weather snippets and stuff like that. So they, they want the more local route with theirs. I have a video. I'll put it up in the card above showing the ones in Western New York so far, and I'll be making more updated videos about that in the future. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I think this is a pretty cool new feature. Thank you to my Patreon members and channel members. It means a lot that you guys are supporting me. If you want to join, click the card above. If not, liking the video, commenting, sharing it with your friends or anybody else that's interested in this stuff will definitely help out the channel. But until next time, I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. Follow Western New York Over the Air on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at WNY Over the Air. Like Western New York Over the Air on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. Support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. And check out WNYOverTheAir.com for live band scans, cord cutting tips, and much more.